Hey everyone, my name is Barbara and we are here at Sebastiani talking with Dave and we're going to learn all about the rich history of Sebastiani. So why don't you come venture with us beyond the barrel? Today with Dave, the senior wine educator and historian of Sebastiani Wine. Nice to meet you, Dave. <laughs> it's nice to meet you, Barbara. Thank you so much. So I am excited to hear all about Sebastiani. Well, we're excited to share with you and to share with everyone. It's a, a big part of history here in Sonoma Valley and Northern California and the wine industry as a whole. Um, we're one of the, the longest continuing and operating winery in the state. We've actually been making wine here consecutively for 117 years, and not a lot of wineries can, can stake that claim. So, That's awesome. Uh, the winery was founded in, in 1904 by Samuel Sebastiani. Um, our building itself, when people come visit, they look around, they see the stone building. It was actually built in 1875. This was the town's largest horse stable. Uh, it was owned by a, an Italian gentleman named Fidavante Milani, um, who owned it, took care of the, the animals in the stable, and he had a little winery up, up front. Um, had a hard time making a go of it, um, but he met a, a young gentleman named Samuel Sebastiani. Sam Sebastiani uh, left Italy uh, in 1895 at the age of 21. Um, and he left all by himself. Didn't have any money, just enough for passage to New York City. Um, he learned the art of winemaking from the monks in Tuscany, um, where his family managed the vineyards for decades. Um, but it was a very impoverished life. Um, and in 1895, with the influx of, of Italians um, leaving Italy, um, he decided that America was a land of opportunity. And so at 21 years of age, got on a boat and came to America. Uh, he worked in New York restaurants and uh, earned enough passage to come to California. Um, worked in Colma, in Daly City, south of San Francisco, in artichoke fields um, until he could afford to buy a team of horses and a wagon to make his way to Sonoma. Um, in the early 1900s, Italians knew about Sonoma. They knew about the, the climate here. It was very Mediterranean, very reminiscent of what it was like in, in Italy. So he came here as a young man, um, got a job hauling cobblestones from the nearby mountains that went into the building uh, of this building and also the building of the streets of San Francisco prior to 1900. He got a job as a winemaker for a winery nearby. He made $1.25 a day plus room and board, but he really honed his skills as a winemaker. And in his relationship with Milani, um, started to, to develop a business sense so that when he took over the building in 1904, he had a vision and he had a plan. He was 30 years old. Uh, in 1904, he made his first batch of Zinfandel, 500 gallons, and the tank is here on the property. Um, and he started selling wine door to door to the neighbors here. And he started to branch out a little bit more and uh, started reaching out to other, other neighborhoods and, and other cities, eventually reaching out to the Archdiocese of San Francisco to produce sacramental wines. And I said he was a smart man. He actually um, paid Milani off for the building in five years. And in nine short years, increased production from 500 gallons to 300,000 gallons. Wow. He was essentially producing um, about two, over 200,000 cases of wines today. Um, so he's very successful. He started to become the area's largest employer. He had 100 people working on the property here. So interestingly, um, as Prohibition was looming on the horizon, and having a uh, hundred employees, he felt it a responsibility to keep them gainfully employed. Most wineries and grape growers in, in California, believe it or not, actually voted for the passage of Prohibition. 
Oh, okay. They thought that it was going to pertain to distilled spirits only. And the rules kind of changed after it was voted in. And 260 wineries in Sonoma County, all of them had to close down. We were grandfathered in by the United States government with one of those seven bonds in this area to produce sacramental wines. So we Lucky. stayed open. <laughs> yes. uh, Sam kept all 100 people gainfully employed, never, pissed a, never missed a payroll, um, but it was a struggle. Um, in 1919, he actually purchased 28 acres of land adjacent to the winery and, and planted hundreds of cherry trees and orchards uh, and a small vineyard um, so that he could can fruits, vegetables, tomatoes, even dog food, just to keep everybody employed. And uh, he believed in hard work. Um, he made his wife, Elvira, a foreman of the cannery while he ran the winery. Um, so we were shipping wine to the East Coast. Now something happened, the, the uh, 19th Amendment was ratified to include medicinal wines. Doctors were writing prescriptions for port and sherry consumption. Affordable only to the very wealthy, the prescriptions were three to four dollars a piece and who could afford those during the, the depression? Um, but um, that also increased our production. We actually had the railroad run right through the Sebastiani property. Wow. Um, we had six 20,000 gallon tank cars that were shipping uh, port and sherry across the United States. So Sam was mindful of his responsibility um, to the community and to thank the community for helping keep him uh, in operation. He built homes paved streets, put in lampposts at his own expense. He built a movie theater, the first roller rink, the first bowling alley, the first two-story hotel, and installing the first um, elevator in Sonoma. And he, he loved children. Um, so with the additions of the, the roller rink, he also built our convent. He built our first Catholic school. Um, yeah, lots of contributions to the community. Yeah. Um, he was in charge of the winery um, and worked up until the age of 64 and uh, he decided it was time to retire in 1938 and at that point he called his son, youngest son August home from college to take over and run the winery. And August was also a, a marketing genius and a talented winemaker, actually increased production here at Sebastiani from 2 million gallons to 4 million gallons in four short years. Um, great at marketing, um, was actually the first in the family to put the Sebastiani name on a bottle of wine. Wow. And actually was the first to introduce vintage wine so that the vintage date was actually on the front of the bottle. So. So lots of rich history, uh, lots of dedication. Um, August had three children, uh, Samuel, J., Don, and uh, Marianne. Uh, all three of them had um, a turn at running the winery. Um, our name is well known. Um, when success is measured by growth, um, the Sebastiani label had increased to seven and a half million cases of wine uh, in the 1980s and, and 1990s. So, um, but as time passed on, um, the family decided that they wanted to do what they do best and that is highlight Sonoma grown grapes. And they had three, three other labels that they had sold to Constellation brands um, and focused on Oh, down to about 240,000 cases of wine, producing premium wines. Um, our wines have been featured at in our presidential inaugurations. Uh, our wines have been served uh, to the Pope uh, on his visits. Um, so our, our, our name is out there. Mm -hmm. So visitors that come to the winery can also see one of the largest hand-carved collections uh, in, in the U.S. We have over 300 wood carvings done by one man named Earl Brown um, who came here at the age of 68 um, applying for a job as a tour guide 
uh, August Sebastiani learned that he liked to wood carve in his spare time. Uh, and at that point on, his job title changed. Uh, and he had carte blanche to go anywhere in the winery he wanted and carved whatever he wanted without anyone's approval. He carved wood barrels, doors, uh, plaques, signs of all kinds, never using a power tool. It, and it's, it's actually one of the most beautiful collections of, of wood carving any, anywhere. So. That's awesome. <laughs> I am so excited to see those barrels and thank you so much for your time and sharing the rich history of Sebastiani. Our pleasure, Barbara. And I hope you all join us next time on Beyond the Barrel. <laughs> Cheers.